Hi, I'm Nathan, and I'll be presenting self-processing private sensor data via garbled encryption. And this is joint work with Abhishek Jain and Amit Sahai. So to motivate the problem we study in this paper, consider the following scenario. There's a private data owner. This could be, say, a country or a landowner. And this private data owner possesses some private data that is collected by sensor readings. That is, the private data owner has some sensors deployed on their private land that are taking measurements. And this constitutes the private data. Now, the private data wishes to protect their private data, so they are unwilling to divulge it. However, they are willing to reveal some specific function evaluations on the private data. So how would we go about solving such a problem? Um, well, there are several solutions. Uh, one such solution would be to simply have the private data owner personally compute the function evaluations or use a trusted third party to do so. However, this either requires the private data owner to remain online throughout the duration of the system or to trust some external party completely. And another solution would be to have sensors communicate amongst each other. However, this solution would require the sensors to be more sophisticated and could potentially open up the system to additional attack vectors. In this work, we ask the following question. Um, can we solve this problem using only very computationally weak, non-communicating sensors? Uh, in our solution, sensors will be extremely weak and will only need to be capable of storing an AES key and evaluating AES. Moreover, can we have the private data owner go offline after a one-time setup? That is, there's going to be some trusted setup that will create the sensors and some other data, but after this trusted setup is finished and the sensors have been deployed, can the private data owner go offline? So to summarize, we would like there to be some trusted setup, uh, and this trusted setup will produce sensors and some function key data. The private data owner will then deploy the sensors and go offline. And after this occurs, the system will self-process. And what we mean by this is that every time step, sensors will make measurements and broadcast encrypted readings. Then, any monitoring user with access to function key data um, should be able to compute the predetermined function evaluations at each time step. Now observe uh, that in this setup, there is no communication between sensors. Moreover, the function evaluations can be on readings from different time steps. That is, we could consider a scenario where one sensor took a reading at 5 minutes and another at 10 minutes. And then a different sensor took a reading at 15 minutes. Our system will support a function evaluation computed jointly on these three readings, even though they took place at different times and were taken by different sensors. Our self-processing private sensor data system could be used in several applications. For example, if a treaty is negotiated between countries or regulations are imposed on a company, the country or company could deploy sensors to make measurements, and the function evaluations could be used to ensure that they are complying. Then physical inspections would only need to verify that the sensors themselves had not been tampered with, as opposed to more intrusive inspections that would otherwise be needed to ensure compliance. Another application could be for an automated warning system. In this system, a government could deploy sensors and publish the function key data, then, if the system was ever in an alert state, any monitoring user could learn this information. By using a self-processing private sensor data system, the government would not require any communication on its part other than the one-time trusted setup. And moreover, since the system is self-processing, it would require minimal upkeep to maintain. Okay, so the threat model for our system is the following. An adversary that possesses all the function key data and all encrypted sensor readings should not be able to learn anything about the private data apart from what can be learned from the allowed function evaluations. And moreover, even if the adversary at some point um, compromises the sensors and learns the secret key stored on them, then the adversary should only learn the future sensor readings. That is, all the previously published encrypted readings should remain secure. So our goal in this work is to build practical self-processing private sensor data systems where the sensors are weak computational devices that don't communicate among each other and that only need to be capable of storing an AES key and computing AES. And to achieve this, we introduce a new primitive called garbled encryption. And garbled encryption is similar to functional encryption and uh, more generally multi-input functional encryption. 
In garbled encryption, every ciphertext has an associated index with the guarantee that no two ciphertexts ever have the same index. Thus, we can view the encryptor as stateful and maintaining a counter state. And function keys in garbled encryption only allow computation on specific ciphertexts as defined by their indices. Um, and in this work, we'll show how to construct this primitive from only one-way functions, or in particular, AS. And then we'll show how to use this primitive to realize a self-processing sensor system. So in garbled encryption, there is some authority that possesses the master secret key of the system. And this authority can issue function keys to different users. Uh, these function keys are given by the function they compute along with the indices of ciphertext on which they are compatible. So in this example, the first user is given a function key that is capable of computing F1 on the pair of ciphertexts with indices I1 and I3. Okay, and then anyone uh, possessing the master secret key can broadcast encryptions of messages. So in this case, X1 is encrypted uh, with index I1 and X3 is encrypted with index I3. Then users uh, that, that compute function keys or sorry, that can possess function keys are able to compute on these ciphertexts. In this example, the first user is able to learn F1 evaluate on X1 and X3 since they possess the function key for F1 associated with the indices I1 and I3. However, the two other users are not able to learn anything since they don't have access to a ciphertext with index I2. And now the security notion for garbled encryption is the following. An adversary is uh, able to request function keys of its choosing and encryptions of messages with respect to indices of its choosing. It then makes a challenge message query where it submits two different messages and asks for an encryption of one of them with respect to a chosen index. And the adversary wins if it can tell which encryption it was given with non-negligible advantage. And observe that we impose the restriction that the function evaluations that uh, the honest behavior supports evaluate to the same value on either challenge message. As otherwise this would serve as a trivial distinguisher. Now we can consider two notions of security. Uh, selective security, where the adversary must submit its challenge message query along with all its encryption queries prior to making any function queries. And adaptive security, where the adversary can interleave any queries in an arbitrary order. So in this work, we construct selectively secure garbled encryption in the plane model, assuming one-way functions, and we construct adaptively secure garbled encryption in the random oracle model. Now, as the name suggests, the main tool in our construction of garbled encryption is garbled circuits. So in garbled circuits, there's a garbling algorithm that takes as input a circuit C and outputs a garbled circuit along with labels for the input wires. And so, for example, if you wanted to evaluate the garbled circuit on the input x equals 0, 1, 0, then given the garbled circuit and the corresponding input labels, that is the 0 input wire for the first uh, bit, the 1 label for the second bit, and the 0 label for the third bit, it's possible to evaluate and learn C of x. And now the security notion uh, for garbled circuit says that there exists some simulator that given C of x is able to produce a simulated garbled circuit and simulated labels that are computationally indistinguishable from the real garbled circuit and the real labels for x. This is called a selectively secure garbled circuit as the simulator is given C of x and produces both the simulated garbled circuit and simulated labels. And this is sufficient for the construction of selectively secure garbled encryption, which we'll focus on in this talk. However, to achieve adaptively secure garbled encryption, we need an adaptive notion of security for garbled circuits. And in fact, we're going to need a fine-grained notion of adaptive security, where the adversary first submits a circuit and then submits input bits one by one. And the simulator must be capable of giving out the simulated garbled circuit and then the input labels one by one and is only given C of X prior to giving out the final input label as this is when it's defined. And such adaptively secure garbled circuits can be constructed in the random oracle model. However, in this, in this talk, we're just gonna focus on the selectively secure case as it's simpler. And so to construct garbled encryption, we actually need a slightly different definition of security, which we call chosen wire key security. In this definition, the adversary actually gets to choose the input labels that the garbled circuit will use for the input of its choice. 
then the simulator is given these input labels and must be able to produce a garbled circuit that along with these labels is indistinguishable from the real garbled circuit with the input labels for X set to be the adversarially specified ones. And it turns out that this can be done quite easily by simply running the original garbled circuit algorithm and then encrypting all the old labels under these new labels. And in this, new, in this way, the new labels can be set to be whatever we want. So how do we construct garbled encryption? Uh, well, it turns out that this can be done quite simply using garbled circuits. So the master secret key of the system is simply a PRF key K. And for simplicity, I'm going to consider the case where the encrypted messages are simply bits. However, this idea can be extended to polynomial length messages. So for every index i, rec recall that uh, ciphertexts are indexed with some index i, we associate a zero label and a one label that are defined according to these PRF evaluations that i concatenate with zero and i concatenate with one. And an encryption of a bit x with respect to index i is simply the appropriate label for that index. Now to generate a function key, we simply garble the circuit computing the function with the input labels set to be those specified by the indices of the function key. So in this case, since the function key is for the circuit C, with indices I and J, we use we garble the circuit C and we use the input labels associated with the indices I and J as the input labels for this garbled circuit. And then the function key is simply the garbled circuit along with the indices that it supports, I and J, in the clear. And observe that given the function key and the corresponding ciphertext, one possesses both the garbled circuit and labels for this garbled circuit and can therefore learn the desired function evaluation. And now using garbled encryption, we can easily build a self-processing sensor system. So to do this, every sensor in the system is assigned a number. In this case, the sensor is assigned number i and stores the PRF key k. And at time step t, the sensor performs a reading and broadcasts the PRF evaluation. So if, in this case, the reading is a bit, if the reading is the bit b, it broadcasts the PRF evaluation at i concatenated with the time t concatenated with the bit b. And the function key data for this self-processing sensor system is simply all the garbled encryption function keys for the desired functions on the appropriate ciphertext. That is all the garbled circuits necessary. However, this approach fails to handle sensor compromise, since in this situation, if a sensor is compromised, all the data is rendered insecure, including the past data, since everything was encrypted using the key K. So to address this, we have sensors ratchet the keys forward. That is, at each time step after broadcasting the encryption, the sensor will hash and update its stored key. And it turns out that by modifying our garbled encryption primitive to one that we call time-based garbled encryption that supports the hashing of keys, we can obtain the desired result. And I refer you to the paper for full details. So in order to evaluate the practicality of our self-processing sensor system, we implemented it. Um, and we use the garbled circuit library of JWBBB17, which improves upon the just garble library by implementing half gates. And our implementation was done in C using AES128 as the underlying PRF. And we implemented the adaptively secure variant as this is the one that you would want to use in practice because in an actual deployment of this self-processing sensor system, all the function key data is specified before any sensor readings are taken and this corresponds to the adaptively secure variant. And we tested the performance of our implementation on various functions such as DNF, threshold, and max. So I'll go over our evaluation results for several scenarios that may be useful for self-processing sensor systems. So in the first scenario, there are 64 sensors, eight in eight different areas, taking pressure readings every 10 minutes. And these pressure readings are measured in bits, either normal or abnormal. And we would like to report if all sensors in an area report abnormal for four consecutive measurements. And we want the system to last for 10 years. So in this setting, our evaluation results showed that trusted setup will generate 18.3 gigabytes of garbled circuits in 56 seconds. And then sensors will broadcast 16 bytes every 10 minutes. And then some monitoring user can learn the function evaluation at any time step by performing a 56 microsecond computation. 
and downloading 38.9 kilobytes of data. Thus, for this scenario, we view our scheme as quite practical. And for another scenario, suppose there are 16 sensors deployed in the country that are taking radiation measurements, uh, represented as 32-bit integers, every hour. And we would like to learn the maximum observed measurement every hour. And we would like our system to last for 25 years. Then we found that Trusted Setup would generate 12.7 gigabytes of garbled circuits in 2.2 minutes. And the sensors would broadcast 512 bytes every hour. And a monitoring user would only have to perform a 385 microsecond computation every hour and only download 66.4 kilobytes of data. And thus we view this as quite practical as well. So in summary, we introduced a new primitive called garbled encryption, and we used it to build a self-processing private sensor data system, and then we implemented it and showed practicality for various scenarios. Thank you.